What is a low-carb diet? There is no official definition for a low-carbohydrate or low-carb diet. That means that there is no official number of carbohydrate grams in a low-carb diet. Weight loss programs that restrict or require you to count carbohydrates are usually called low-carb diets. Are low-carb diets good for everyone? Most everyone will benefit from reducing excess sugar intake. Major health organizations recommend limiting the added sugars to several teaspoons per day. The extent to which people would benefit from greater carbohydrate reduction has to do with how well our individual bodies handle carbohydrate, as sugars and starches in our food all end up as sugars in our bodies. People with certain types of health concerns are more likely to benefit from low-carb diets than other dietary approaches. Health conditions that may benefit from low-carb diets include fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes. If you are taking medication to lower blood glucose or blood pressure, check with your doctor before making any changes to your diet. When you lose weight, the dose of certain medications you take may need to be readjusted. Low-carb plans The term low-carb diet actually refers to many different dietary plans, but all these plans have one shared characteristic, the modification or reduction in added starches and refined carbohydrates. Low-carb diets are sometimes called reduced carbohydrates or low glycemic diets. There are different variations to a low-carb diet. Before starting any new diet plan, always consult with your healthcare provider and consider getting a referral to a registered dietitian. Diving into a low-carbohydrate eating plan without guidance from a registered dietitian can result in negative effects. It's always best to have your meal plan tailored to your needs to prevent any adverse effects. The three approaches to eating low-carb include 1. Reduce overall carbohydrates Using a low-carb food pyramid as a guide, you can put together meals based on a balanced diet of low-carb vegetables, low-sugar fruits, healthy fats, and ample proteins. Ideally, under 35% of your daily calorie can take. 2. Determine your individual carbohydrate tolerance each of us has a different degree of carbohydrate tolerance. Some plans are centered around helping you find out what yours is and adjusting your diet accordingly. This includes the Atkins diet, the South Beach diet, and the Paleo diet. 3. Try a ketogenic diet. One of the more popular plans is a ketogenic diet. A very low-carb diet that causes the body to use fat for energy rather than glucose. This puts the body into a state referred to as a keto adaption, in which the burning of fat can increase stamina and vitality. What are its benefits? A low-carb diet is usually rich in protein. A low-carb, high-protein diet can give you a greater sense of satiety, so you will feel fuller for longer. Also. Protein is important for building muscle. Eating enough protein during weight loss can help maintain more muscle mass. What about the downside? The disadvantages of a low-carb diet can be Low-carb diets are often also high in fat. High-fat diets are also often too high in saturated fats. Because of the risk of cardiovascular disease, the Dutch Health Council recommends replacing saturated fat products with unsaturated fat as far as possible. A low-carbohydrate diet increases the risk of deficiency of some nutrients, in particular, certain B vitamins, dietary fiber, and iodine. In addition, the positive health effects of some carbohydrate-rich products are lost. For example, whole grain products reduce the risk of heart disease type 2 diabetes, and intestinal cancer. Low-carb diet for type 2 diabetes 
A low-carb diet appears to have a positive effect on blood sugar levels in patients with type 2 diabetes on the short term. When weight is lost on such a diet, this weight loss also has beneficial effects on the body's sensitivity to insulin and blood sugar levels. Weight loss is especially positive for overweight diabetics. More research is needed on the long-term effects of low-carbohydrate diet on the health of people with type 2 diabetes. If you have diabetes and want to follow a low-carb or ketogenic diet, good medical guidance and or the guidance of a dietitian is very important. Most common low-carb mistakes 1. Eating too many carbs While there is no strict definition of a low-carb diet, anything under 100 to 150 grams per day is generally considered low-carb. This amount is definitely a lot less than the standard restaurant diet. You may achieve a great results within this carb range, as long as you eat unprocessed real foods. But if you want to get into ketosis, which is essential for a ketogenic diet, then this level of intake may be excessive. Most people will need to go under 50 grams per day to reach ketosis. Keep in mind that this doesn't leave you with many carb options, except vegetables and small amounts of berries. 2. Eating too much protein Protein is a very important macronutrient, which most people don't get enough of. It can improve feelings of fullness and increase fat burning better than other macronutrients. Generally speaking, more protein should lead to weight loss and improved body composition. However, low-carb dieters who eat a lot of lean animal foods can end up eating too much of it. When you eat more protein than your body needs, some of its amino acids will be turned into glucose via a process called gluconeogenesis. This can become a problem on very low-carb ketogenic diets and prevent your body from going into full-blown ketosis. According to some scientists, a well-formulated low-carb diet should be high in fat and moderate in protein. 3. Being afraid of eating fat Most people get the majority of their calories from dietary carbs, especially sugars and grains. When you remove this energy source from your diet, you must replace it with something else. However, some people believe that cutting out fats on a low-carb diet will make your diet even healthier. This is a big mistake. If you don't eat carbs, you must add fat to compensate. Failing to do so could lead to hunger and inadequate nutrition. There is no scientific reason to fear fat as long as you avoid trans fats and choose healthy ones like monounsaturated and omega-3 fats instead. A fat intake around 70% of total calories may be a good choice for some people on low-carb for ketogenic diets. To get fat into this range, you must choose fatty cuts of meat and liberally add healthy fats to your meals. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your family or friends. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell.